Oh my god, it's the year of the Linux desktop! <laughs> no, I'm not under any grand delusions, okay? No, this is not my- I know people in the comments are gonna be like, Oh my god, it's Muda's monthly Linux cope video! And, uh, you know, yeah, you can write that in the comment section, and you know what, I'm not gonna be offended, because, you know, honestly, I like sipping on a good cup of copium every once in a while. When I talk about Linux, now, when it comes to things like computer operating systems, I have been a real big complainer of Windows, as have plenty of other channels, okay? I think in the last few years, Microsoft and their push for artificial intelligence and just constantly bloating their operating system to the point where it resembles something out of the Sonic Inflation series is a bit insane, okay? And yes, I did in fact play Sonic Inflation on my channel. You should go check those videos out. It is in fact a very traumatizing experience. And speaking of trauma, it was obviously pretty traumatic for Assassin's Creed players to one day wake up after a Windows update and realize, whoa, their game was non-functional. And this caused a game to be review bombed. In reality, this game actually worked underneath Linux. So in some cases, even official software for official operating systems can have problems outside the scope of even the game manufacturer. But what is more traumatizing is constantly complaining about something without offering people some level of change. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, okay, when you want things to be better, you gotta put some effort into it. And so today, I wanna kind of bring up the idea of Linux getting significantly easier. Now, you probably read some crazy stories that Valve is suddenly pushing their Steam OS to other little handheld devices. Now, the Steam Deck is one of the fanciest, nicest little handheld gaming devices that I own. And whereas my previous gaming devices used to be PlayStation Portables and Vitas, this is where I do a whole chunk of my gaming nowadays. Whether I play emulators or whether I play actual games for PC, this is where I do most of my gaming. And you know the best part about this device? It is a Linux handheld device. And it is in fact such a good experience that for most people who have no idea what the fuck a Windows or a Linux is, or even a Mac, will not be able to identify usually what system runs this because it's so smooth and relaxing. Now, if you wanna talk about insanity, when you gotta see stuff like, let's help Adobe, helping Adobe with their public relations, how I broke up with Adobe, this man has went through insanity in the course of six months dealing with one of the shittiest companies that I think most content creators know. I do all of my stuff on my channel pretty much by myself. And that includes like making the videos, scripting them out, editing them, putting them on the internet. It is really a one-stop shop here for the most part. And unless I specifically need something, then I'll probably contract out, but that's usually very, very rare. Uh, for me, because Adobe is such dog shit software and it doesn't work underneath Linux, like James Lee, I decided to look to the alternative. And of course he showed one of like a snippet of my video where I was looking at gaming. And let me tell you something right now, gaming, a lot of things are starting to become pretty easy underneath Linux, okay? It generally has become a situation where it's very plug and play. Now, generally when I make these videos about Linux, people are always like, whoa, Muda, which version of Linux should I get? There's like hundreds out there. And of course, when you go onto the internet and people look up best Linux gaming distro, which is actually a pretty popular search, You'll usually find from Tech Radar best Linux distro for gaming of 2025. <laughs> Article was written in 2023, by the way. They just <laughs> okay. So all right, let's click on their best distributions. All right, we get Draugr OS. Okay, ooh, something straight out of Skyrim. Uh, Ubuntu Game Pack. I'm just gonna tell you right now. Please don't go to any of these websites. I'm gonna walk you through again the best versions of Linux out there. Okay, or at least for gamers. Now, if you're somebody in the gaming camp, it's become so easy that you can go to sites like Bazike. There's also things like Nobara OS, which again, come with all of the prerequisite, you know, uh, uh, installations, drivers, and packages you need. So if you're making a gaming computer and you're worried about installing Linux because six years ago you tried installing a version and your video drivers weren't working or something just wasn't working, both of these systems provide a good enough, reasonable built set that you can just install this pretty much to any hardware configuration and things should work pretty much out of the box. But Bazite is one of my actual personal favorites. Again, it's as simple as going to their website, bazite.gg, going to download Bazite, and again, asking it what your hardware is. So for instance, if you use a gaming computer like me, you can use a desktop device. You can pick which graphics card you have. So whether you have Nvidia's RTX lineup or something significantly older, then you can still join in on the action. Are you somebody with Intel HD graphics? Well, there's the option for you. Do you have the ARCs options galore? AMD, anything above the 400 RX series? You click this button. 
And then of course you pick which actual environment you want. So do you want KDE, something that resembles SteamOS? Or no, you click what you know, and of course you can ask if you want Steam Gaming Mode. And Bazite is so awesome that I have been using it for like two months now. I have a computer set up in my basement, which I've basically turned into the Muda box, the Muda station, the Muda station six, where I effectively, I love console gaming, but I want the simplicity of my PC games on the console. So by using something like Bazite, I can basically set up a computer, hit the power button, it starts up like a console, I connect a PlayStation controller to it, and lo and behold, I'm playing my entire PC library, plus emulators, plus anything else I throw at it, on an actual Linux device that has the same user interface as my Steam Deck. It is, without a doubt, one of the simplest ways to get into Linux. Installing it is such a breeze that you literally just press next a few times. I'm not even joking, it's about as easy to install as Microsoft Windows. You download this ISO file, you copy it to a flash drive as you would a Windows installation, you stick it into your computer, boot in, and literally you go through an installation process that is as simple as a Windows 11 installation. Then once you've installed it, it'll go through a questionnaire where you can decide what you want on your system, uh, depending on what you use. So if you want a whole bunch of emulators, Bazite will install all the emulators you need. If you want things like RGB software, it will install exactly what you need. Steam, whatever other game launcher you need, it will have that provisioned and ready to go. Which is, again, one of those things where people always say Linux is confusing, but it's gotten to a point where even for people that are gamers, which a lot of people on my channel are, this is literally a distribution designed to make your life as easy as possible when you switch over to the Penguin side of computer systems. Now, somebody that believes that Windows' dominance pretty much exists from the fact that most people who go to stores and purchase computers or even build computers or have people build it for them will usually just have Windows installed as a default because that's where they're at. It's not like there's hardware manufacturers that don't exist. There's companies like System76 that produce powerful Linux laptops and desktops. There's companies like Tuxedo that create actual laptops designed for people who want to use Linux and play some of the most updated recent games as well. Even when it comes to things like recent games, you can play pretty much modern day releases day one. There used to be a period where like, uh, not even so far ago, like three, four years ago, when some games would release on PC, I know that in my head I would have to wait like a month to play them, but because Linux has gotten so good with Valve's involvement in the community, because remember, Linux is a community effort. It's not just big companies, it's a community-wide effort. Because we've all come together and made our experience better, playing games like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a day one possibility when it used to be, wait a month for this game to work underneath Linux's layer, which is not good if you want to convince gamers to switch over. Imagine telling somebody they have to wait an extra 30 days to play a game underneath an unsupported operating system. But Valve has made it so easy that for people who are typically gamers, they're not going to notice any substantial difference unless they're playing something like an online only game. Now the thing about it is, if you go to Bazite's page and all of these Linux gaming variants, it's not gonna be easy to get somebody to switch over to the Linux side if this is basically their entry point. Now I personally recommend to anybody new in the Linux camp that they should get Linux Mint 22. It is one of the easiest versions of Linux to get installed and it has such a compatibility like, you know, boon that I find it the easiest to drop into any set of hardware and people just instantly go right from the get-go using this for their daily tasks. But I think beyond all of these, Valve for Gamers has something super important. Now, this is SteamOS's page, and this is not the current SteamOS that's part of the Steam Deck. This is actually from back when they were making Steam Machines, and this is based on Debian, which is like a different entire version of like Linux that isn't even Arch-based like the current day SteamOS is. I feel like Valve has to come out with this actual operating system to make it incredibly easy to switch to actual Linux. And not only switch, but also provide that level of like brand understanding. I think the reason the Steam Deck has done as well as it, as it has is because of Valve's association. Steam is pretty much a gaming pillar. And I think if anyone's gonna have a dent and actually make some serious changes, it's gonna be Valve. They've already done a lot of work with uh, Proton and basically fixing up Linux gaming to the point that it's so good now. I really feel the only way to move beyond and actually get this beyond just Steam Decks or handheld gaming PCs is to release an ISO file that will allow Valve 
to at least spread their operating system to other systems because SteamOS is usable like a regular desktop operating system anyways. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to online stuff, this is where I think Valve is really needed. Now, Valve has produced SteamOS, which is still not public in any capacity. And while Valve is, I think, working with other vendors, I think there is a long game in the process. Now, Valve is not involved in Linux for completely nice reasons. Remember, Valve is a big company, and for them, it's about making money. Valve doesn't want to have any of their sales threatened by Microsoft one day coming in and saying, yeah, we're not going to treat you the same way. We're going to have, you know, Microsoft Store be like the primary option. So for Valve, having something like Linux means that down the road, if Microsoft decides to get a little funny, they have an actual out, which they've produced right now. So for companies like Valve, having Linux is incredibly important so that people who use their storefront are not also required to also use Windows. But the big problem here is there's a lot of games on Steam that have kernel anti-cheat, specifically multiplayer-oriented games. So if you go to a website known as Are We Anti-Cheat Yet, I've shown you this before. Unfortunately, according to this metric, 59% of games are still broken as of today, and there are 41 games that are actually denied, meaning the developers have straight up said to Linux gamers, we do not want you in the community. We cannot trust hackers using your operating system to infect our games, which hurts to hear. But in reality, if you're somebody in the concept of gaming, then you can always move to vendors that support you. For instance, one game that I absolutely used to play almost on a daily basis was Rainbow Six Siege. And unfortunately, while people are still kind of arguing with Valve, or not Valve, but Ubisoft, and I find it pretty humbling that even in this situation, people are bringing up videos from me showing, again, somebody who has an issue with their anti-cheat. And the problem is, Ubisoft could fix this by simply flicking a switch on their end, but they choose not to. And there is a reason. It's because the anti-cheat underneath Linux is not as invasive as the Windows version, which is what Ubisoft needs to protect Rainbow Six Siege from hackers. Not to say that hackers don't exist underneath Siege. I mean, they clearly fucking do. But uh, <laughs> the reality is they're trying to kick us out just because they're trying to make this as secure as they possibly can in their eyes. And the thing is, for somebody in the Linux community, ever since I switched over, because I'm underneath Linux and because this doesn't work underneath virtual machines, me playing Rainbow Six Siege is just not a fucking possibility, which is why I've decided not to jump into it. Now, the thing about switching to Linux is honestly giving up some of these games that do not respect this new emerging platform. Well, I shouldn't say new. It's been around for a while. But the popularity it's gaining is not something I think companies are going to be ignoring forever. Now, for every Call of Duty, there are always games that are popular enough, like Marvel Rivals that just recently dropped, which actually works and supports Linux for now, at least. And I would say for now, hesitantly, if it wasn't for the fact that, again, the company, the director behind this, actually came out in support for gamers on these platforms. So a few days ago, there was a big story in the Linux community where the Mac users playing Marvel Rivals got kicked out because Mac users and Linux users use effectively the same compatibility technologies to run these games. Now, when that happened for Mac users, Linux guys were also a little bit worried too. In fact, from what I recall, there were actually some bans that occurred. And these bans actually got completely overturned by the game developer and the anti-cheat responsible for Marvel Rivals because they wanted to support this community. So for me, a person that just started getting into Marvel Rivals, I even put in some of my own money as a microtransaction as a show of support for a company actually giving a shit about Linux users. And when these bans happened, I was a little bit concerned, but seeing this response from this developer, where they actually came out of their way to assist the community, shows me that if I'm going to support games in the future, it's probably going to be from developers that don't make excuses about cheating behavior on video games or misattributing cheats to just Linux users. I'm going to support companies that put in the effort to actually get money from us. And that's really a path that I want to go forward with, right? Like for every Grand Theft Auto Online, there is a Marvel rival. For every Rainbow Six Siege, there is a Halo Master Chief collection. It's not that their multiplayer games aren't available for Linux. It's just that it's going to be a slow transition. And I don't doubt as the market share grows, some of these developers will find a way to actually get these games working underneath Linux or Mac. And the other reality of it too is if you really think about it, 
Valve SteamOS has a real strong option of providing a specific proprietary way of supporting these anti-cheat solutions in a specific Linux distribution that Valve can certify themselves as opposed to people using, you know, other Linux solutions. There could be a way of certifying, you know, these uh, operating systems so that developers know that a untainted version of SteamOS and its kernel is being used, which therefore can be used to run anti-cheat games like Call of Duty down the road. Maybe if they don't support every single distribution and kernel version of Linux, they could go down the road and support Valve's version of anti cheat and Valve's version of Linux. I think that could be a great compromise going in forward. And honestly, if that is what Valve is planning to do, then it could be one of the biggest fucking blows this year to any control Microsoft has in gaming, okay? And honestly, beyond gaming, the case use for software slowly being developed for Linux is growing as well, right? There's a lot of hardware stuff. There's a lot of video editing softwares like DaVinci Resolve that can easily replace Adobe if somebody puts in the time and effort for it. So I don't think that Linux is a dud. I think it's just starting to emerge. You know, in the last couple of years, we've reached a point where using this operating system has become almost feature complete in many common cases. And as those specific cases start to dwindle, you know, as modding becomes easier in video games, as game compatibility becomes better, I really don't think that Microsoft is going to have as much of a dominance in their space as they once really had. In fact, if anything, it is a waning prospect for them. And when it comes to, again, using software, you probably have noticed that I've probably snuck in a little bit more editing mistakes than usual. And it's because I have actually made the conscious decision in 2025 to cut the Adobe subscription and go entirely to DaVinci Resolve, which is supported underneath Linux. So because I don't like using Windows and I don't like supporting software that doesn't support the Penguin, I have made the decision to, again, take time out of my life, take time out of my day to relearn things so I can actually support software that actually cares about me, which is sort of the energy that I think people should have if they want things to actually move forward. If you want Linux to succeed, then you probably should be supporting the developers that actually put the effort into supporting you versus the developers that just outright shun the community. And it's because of that that this community will evolve, and at some point the developers that once shunned the Penguin may eventually invite it into their domain. And that is, again, one of the beauties of Linux's freedom, right? It's become so easy lately that switching to it is actually a viable option for a lot of people. But I think generally speaking, for at least big things like gaming, Valve has done such an amazing job that for a lot of gamers who, who, who have thought about switching to this years ago are going to notice that in the span of, again, even like a year, Linux has made such strides that it has become a far more usable operating system. And again, it's only going to get better. So yeah, we're sitting in a world where again, 2025, Windows continues to get bloated and people keep complaining. But honestly, I think the complaints don't need to be happening anymore since for a lot of people, uh, Linux is pretty much there. It's pretty much feature parity in a lot of cases. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that will say, but my specific software doesn't work, and I get it. Obviously, you are the exception to the norm, and I don't expect you to even think of switching. There's going to be a lot of people that say, I play Call of Duty Warzone. I can't switch to Linux because this one specific game I really play doesn't have support, which I totally get. I understand. Unless you're willing to quit those games like I've done, which is not an easy task because some people really do enjoy certain games, this is not a platform for you, but I think it's going to get better. I think 2025 might be the year where a lot of these anti-cheat solutions start to show up underneath Linux through the help of Valve and numerous other companies. And that will finally allow most people, especially in our sphere of gaming, to finally make that switch. Because some of the most popular games are multiplayer titles with, uh, again, Windows requirements. But the moment you strip that one thing away, I think people will finally have a reason to drop the Windows cord and switch entirely over to Linux. But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out.